if any group had to go ahead and turn around a hateful reception and become positively cheered every single week, besides former ranks, it would be the New Day. Um, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Big E, formerly known as Big E Langston, since I remember him being called that when in NXT. Still don't know why they changed it. To make it shorter, at least. I don't know. They, they never really fully explained that. Um, the New Day was... I hated the New Day when they first debuted. Like, it was just being like, really, Vince? You seriously think this is what African Americans act like? Every single one of them. Like, I get, like, and some people were wondering, wait, 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 but our truth does a rapper gimmick, and no one's offended by that. Here's the difference I have with the New Day and our truth. Our truth felt like he was being himself and actually was having fun with the gimmick, whereas the New Day just came across as forced, pretentiously annoying, and very, very, uh, very, very pissed off at everybody. Pissing everybody off because, well, that was how the group was being portrayed. And it, it just, well, and plus, R Truth has changed his gimmick from time to time. Remember his awesome truth storyline they were doing? Still thought that could, uh, still love that storyline. Was my favorite in 2011, possibly the only good storyline they had. Besides the Summer of Punk, but that got botched badly by Triple H. So, heading into 2015, the New Day looked like it was going to be destined for failure. Um, they certainly were heading for failure because, well, they were still being hated. Vince McMahon had reportedly given up on the group about one week after they made their debut, reportedly. Yeah, their daddy clearly shows they have very little caring for their stars. And for... So, for, like, January, they feuded with uh, Tyson Kidd, Cesaro, and Adam Rose. I like to call them Brass Ring Club, for short. And it led to a former... It was originally going to be a six-man elimination tag team match. However, Xavier Woods was injured, so they had to make it a tag team match. And it ended with Brass Ring Club getting the victory over the New Day. And... The New Day would later compete in the Royal Rumble, however, get eliminated. And then, like, they started getting relegated from Raw and Super and SmackDown to Superstars and Main Event for a while. I haven't watched their show, so I wouldn't know what's been going on in them. I think they've just been doing Fighting the Ascension, mostly. So, that was happening for a while, and they didn't go back to Cesaro and Tyson Kidd for a while, and then it was announced they would compete in a fatal four-way tag team match at WrestleMania 31 during the kickoff for the tag team championships. And the New Day was getting a hateful response, but I'll get to that in a bit. This is where they start getting a turnaround for their character for their characters. Um the following night on Raw, the New Day competed in an eight-man tag team match with, alongside the Lucha Dragons against Cesaro Kid and the Ascension. You know, the heels, yet. Yeah, the New Day were getting hated. Uh-huh. You suck at this, Vince. During the match, live audience respond negatively to the New Day, chanting, New Day sucks! New Day sucks! Which was carried over for a few weeks, but it ultimately became their ultimate staple in their characters. And on April 6th, they um, did an interview. The New Day claimed that they were hurt and responded in a more aggressive tone, but maintained their upbeat nature. And during when they were having a match with the Lucha Dragons, Kofi Kingston uh, attacked outside interference and did a cheap shot to, uh, I think it was Sin Cara, and Xavier Woods was smiling, and I was like, yes, that's the anger we want to see, New Day. Let the hate flow through you. And yes, this is where my Palpatine quote started happening, where I started acting like Palpatine and saying, Learn to know the dark side of the Force. Let the hate flow through you. Now. Now. And then they were having more and more of aggressiveness and having more responding to the crowd's hatred of them. And then they start turning that around. And then you stopped hearing New Day sucks. Like you still get it when they piss off the audience and talk about their favorite stuff and insult it. Um, though the New Day started acting more John Cena-like. However, they were being heels now. And though, um, <clears throat> though this would start showing that um, 
Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, Big E would start to turn heels. This would be Kingston and Woods' first heel turn in their WWE careers. And on April 20th edition of Raw, the New Day defeated the Lucha Dragons again to become number one contenders for the tag team titles at Extreme Rules, who at the time was being held by Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. Afterwards, held on to the feet of Sin Cara, preventing him from answering the 10 count. Now, originally it was reported that um, the original plan was going to be the Lucha Dragons versus Brass Ring Club. However, um, they scrapped that. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure because they got popular in NXT and not popular in main roster. Well, anything that's not Vince's creation, he'll destroy it. So, there's the New Day, even though it's consisted of Triple H guys. But, uh, but like I said, I'll get back on that one day. So, the New Day was going to fight Brass Ring Club, and I was wondering, hey, is Adam Rose going to get involved? Because I kind of would actually love to see him back in the group. And they didn't. And I was surprised that... Um, the New Day beat the Tyson Kidd and Cesaro tag team. I thought the Brass Ring Club would hold on to the titles a lot longer. I was really hope looking forward to this long, prosperous reign of them. But they didn't, and it sucked. That it ended after only nine weeks. The shortest reign I've ever seen. And I've seen some short reigns like lasting less than an hour. And, well... That's when the New Day was solidified as heels since I... But then I stopped calling them the New Day for a bit when they were still being faces. I just called them, oh, they're the stereotypes. Stereotypes of stereotypes. Like, that's all they were being. Stereotypes of African Americans. And, well, I hated the New Day, but I was liking this change in direction they were giving them and finally being allowed to be themselves. And during their long reign as... Uh, tag team champions and they're still tag team champions and and I started liking when Big E was starting to say oh WWE Universe don't you dare be sour collab for your soon to be two time champs and feel the power it's a new day yes it is and I was like oh god these guys are so nauseous they were being so entertaining, yet we're supposed to hate them. And, like, they finally were acting like themselves outside of their real, more serious gimmicks they used to portray. I was really liking this new heel turn direction. It was basically Bo Dallas' denial of being like Cena. However, Bo Dallas knows he's being in denial. Whereas Cena, he just believes he is in, believes in his denial. So, yeah. Um... And the New Day was just being so entertaining, and it was just, it was being hilarious. So, they were feuding with Cesaro and Kid for a bit, and they also beat Randy Orton and Roman Reigns in a 3 on 2 handicap match. And if you're beating Randy Orton and Roman Reigns, uh, you kind of show, yeah, we have faith in you. You're being so entertaining and whatnot, so we decided to give you this big push. So they had an epic two out of three falls match at Payback, where Woods got the final pin on Cesaro after the referee confused Woods for Kofi. And that further shows the dark side is strong in the new day. And I was loving every minute of it. They were just being so fun, so hilarious. And then when they were celebrating their de title defense, um, they say, oh, we don't curse, we don't complain, and we don't do any of that kind of stuff. And then when it was announced that uh, they were going to defend the titles in the first ever Elimination Chamber tag team match, Elimination match, all three members uh, were like, what the hell? And what? And complaining and everything. So hypocrisy was happening for them. And it was just being so fun how they reacted. Like, so, like, it was just so fun. And then the New Day would retain their titles in the tag team match. Since all three were allowed to compete after trying to get in the good graces of the authority. After they had to beat Tyson Kidd, Cesaro, the Lucha Dragons, the Ascension, Los Matadores, and Primetime Players. So... <clears throat> So, on June 14th, uh, Kingston would compete in the Money in the Bank ladder match, would lose, while Big E and Xavier Woods defended the tag team titles against the primetime players. All three members lost their titles, and I was once again surprised. Like, like I was expecting the New Day to have a long reign. They're in Vince's good graces. Like, they just beat Roman Reigns and Randy Orton, and they have been having stellar matches. 
So what's with the sudden change? And then they lasted for a month, for at least two months. And <clears throat> the New Day would later have a somewhat kind of feud with Brock Lesnar. Like they advertised it a bit. And Kofi Kingston and the rest of the New Day were destroyed by them. Yeah. Like when you put Kingston involved, then you know they're screwed against Brock Lesnar. The New Day then lost their title rematch at Battleground to the new to the primetime players. So, and then Biggie was doing the soon to be two time champs, and it was just being hilarious how in every city they just addressed it, and um, then they fought in a fatal four way tag team match against the primetime players, the defending champions, Los Matadores, and the Lucha Dragons. Pretty much the only remaining tag teams besides the Ascension were in this match. Sad, isn't it? I mean, like, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan were out of act. Eric Rowan was hurt, so they couldn't do that. So, they re they regained the tag team titles, and they did the most hilarious dance I've ever seen. Especially how the New Day entered the ring singing, New Day! Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't remember the song. Uh, all I know is that it's New York, and WWE uh, responded with, uh, uh, "Oh God, we got we got the people who made the music uh, really mad at us. Censor it, censor it, block it out, cut it out from the entrance." Sucks. So the New Day does this huge dance when they win the tag team match, and it was just so hilarious and funny. Like, my God, Biggie can dance. Like, imagine Biggie dancing is kind of hard to imagine. Like, if this was still his serious gimmick, I would have said that was an ultimate burial, like they did with Tensai, a.k.a. Albert, or A-Train. So, <clears throat> so, the following night on Raw, in a shocking I did not expect this mentality, the Dudley Boys return after the New Day's... Um, after the New Day defeated primetime players, uh, wait, not the primetime players, the Lucha Dragons, and put Woods through a table with the Dudley Death Drop. And then they started a feud with the primetime players and the Dudley Boys. So the primetime players were defeated in a rematch on Raw, and the Dudley Boys would fight the New Day on Night of Champions. And, they, and the New Day and the Dudley Boys, they didn't really have the best match as much as I was hoping for, though I could guess since the Dudley Boys are kind of catching up with age a bit and the only good matches they've been in are mostly ladder matches and tables matches and Bubba Ray has only has done some good matches but ultimately as a tag team they dominate more in the uh weapons based matches as we were later see for um their feud with the Wyatt family so the New Day and the Daily Boys go back to back with the whole Dudley Boys, and then the New Day ch answered John Cena's open challenge, and I was worried that, okay, yep, then John Cena's going to bury them, and then John Cena becomes a hypocrite again by saying, it's time to get serious, and I'm like, but John, you're never serious. In fact, you're, in fact, the New Day copied off of you when they were faces. They were being happy-go-lucky, not taking anything seriously, you know, everything you do. Do we need to remind you about what you did with the Wyatt family with that Photoshop image angle, which I kept saying, turn off the mic. So John Cena being the hypocrite that he is, and whatnot. So the Deadly Boys appeared afterwards to save Cena, which led to an impromptu six-man tag team match because the New Day interfered before Woods lost. And the, and the New Day were victorious after Kingston pinned Devon. And then they were later... Um, defeat and then they were later fight in Madison Square Garden and the New Day once again disqualify victory because um Woods was once again sent through the table <laughs> <clears throat> unfortunately and well the New Day also destroyed John Cena the Dudley Boys and Dolph Ziggler and I was surprised like wait did I just see the New Day go over John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, and the Dudley Boys? Yep, Matchman is very much in faith with them. <laughs> this is the first time I was surprised that Vince McMahon creation backfired, then they managed to have to forcibly go with the regrettable route of, can you be yourselves? 
yeah, I'm like, we hate that, but this angle needs to work, so just go ahead and be yourselves. So at Hell in a Cell, they had their final match with the Dudley Boys. Now, originally the Dudley Boys were going to win, but since the New Day was getting such a positive response and yet a hateful response with as heels since they managed to push the right buttons, they had to go ahead and keep the belt on the New Day, which I was all for. Like, I didn't care if they lost their their match, but um, yeah. So the New Day led their own team heading into Survivor Series with King Baron and Sheamus. And this is when the New Day was starting to get more entertaining with the trombone that Xavier Woods was having. And, and singing, New Day Rocks! New Day Rocks! New Day Rocks! And then when Xavier Woods played the trombone, um, then you got Wade Barrett joining in on the dance. And it was like, most of the heels tend to dance with the New Day when they play with the trombone. Except for Kevin Owens, but Kevin Owens is cool. So, yeah, he's the cool one of the heels and doesn't dance to conformities. So, but they left prematurely to attend to Big E after his elimination, and they lost, ultimately. And they celebrate their one-year anniversary, and they announced an open challenge, which they later backed out for, because the two teams would got involved, and... Then it started a few with the Lucha Dragons and the Usos, which led to a double disqualification match where the New Day would now have to defend their titles against both the Usos and the Lucha Dragons, a TLC and a ladder match. And that was going to be an awesome match. Yep, that was going to be a hell of a match. I was looking forward to this. So... And I was not disappointed. Like, Xavier Woods was on commentary. And and before I get to TLC, I would also mention that Big E was on commentary. And he stole the show pretty much with his dialogue of, Do what you normally never do. Pay attention to the match. And like, wow, you just summed up everything that's wrong with the modern commentary. Like, let's see. The commentary team now doesn't focus on the match. They focus on Twitter. They bully Byron Saxton for God knows what reason. Like, I get fans don't like Byron Saxton, but even I'm starting to feel sorry for him because they constantly bully him. Like, that one time a week before Survivor Series, they went ahead and pu bluntly told Byron, saying, but nobody likes you. And I'm like, okay, I get if that was JBL, but why is Michael Cole saying this? Is he a face yet yeah, everyone hates him, like John Cena? Okay, this is confusing, but I'll get to commentary in another video. So, the New Day would later defend their titles in a ladder match, and <clears throat> and also teamed up with the League of Nations to defeat the Usos, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose on a 7-on-4 handicap match, which sucked. The match sucked. So, heading into TLC... Um, the New Day looked like they were going to lose the belt. Like, everyone assumed, well, the Usos are back, so time to give them back their tag team belts. And yet, the power of positivity strikes again with management. Because now they're saying, yeah, we have so much faith in you that we're actually going to take a pass on the Usos, who we start booking like John Cena or Roman Reigns' buddies, even though they're family. And it ended in the most hilarious way with um, Xavier Woods throwing the trombone at Kalisto after his Selena Del Sol. And like, uh, it reminded me when the Primetime's player manager threw a shoe at Kofi Kingston set yelling, Yo mama! And I was like, oh man, Xavier Woods, you're just so hilarious. And they even, and like the new day afterwards, after their match, uh, congratulated the Lucha Dragons and the Usos honoring them, saying they brought the tag team division to new heights, and they were being sincere about it, but their ego kind of got the better of them when they started celebrating again, and causing them to be beaten up again. But it was just so hilarious to see, like, the New Day have a right to celebrate, but yet, you're constantly being, you're constantly bullying them, so who's the real enemy? Who's the real heel here? And the New Day ends this year on a high note, ends 2015 on a very high note as tag team champions, especially um, how they all now enter the ring with promos, and especially when they start doing this unicorn thing, since Xavier Woods reportedly is a brony, since it was found out he was a brony, 
and was wearing a Pegasus Pony shirt back in early 2015. So in late, their po Pony Unicorn thing was incorporated to the New Day's newest shirt, and the trio made unicorn gestures with their fingers as horns. It was just being so hilarious, especially when they did it again with um, Seth Rollins. And, and I really loved how they interacted with Seth Rollins, like, like saying, get rid of your personal demons, and they start ch cheering. And then a few weeks, then heading into Survivor Series, Seth Rollins once again had to groan at the annoyance of the New Day when they did the Unicorn Jester when Xavier Woods returned. Like, he was like a, oh god, please kill me now look. <laughs> Even though just a few weeks ago, wait, but didn't you like a month ago with cheering with them? And singing with them? Yeah, time flies. So... Yeah, the New Day had a very great year, starting off as being huge disappointments and stereotypes to being possibly the most popular heels in the company. Well, Kevin Owens is still popular, but really, he didn't have to turn around heel heat, face heat, with uh, the audience, unlike the New Day has. So, yeah, it was entertaining for the New Day. I can't wait what they're going to do this year. This was Neo Reality Entertainment. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate, and stay tuned for more.